Okay, sorry guys, we lost you. Uh, but we are back now again. Uh, there's a problem with uh, uh, connectivity. So we now look at demand for labor of a single farm. Okay, so again, we look at some proposals on how we can derive the demand for a single farm. Uh, so earlier we had looked at propositions on, on demand uh, for labor uh, based on the demand for the product of labor, uh, based on the elasticity of the, uh, what labor is producing, and also based on uh, the proportion of labor to the total cost, and also based on the the easy it is to substitute labor for other factors. So we look at those four propositions. Now I want to look at the demand for labor as a single farm, for labor of a single farm. So to demand, to determine the demand for labor of a single farm, we will introduce the theory of marginal productivity of labor. So there is the theory theory of marginal productivity. Theory of marginal productivity. Which is, which essentially is about continuing to uh, employ labor units, as long as the marginal productivity is still positive. So if whatever additional extra unit of labor is adding to the total, the labor is still positive, then the theory of marginal productivity suggests that the farm will continue employing uh, labor and the equilibrium point will be uh, where the the marginal productivity of labor is exactly equal to the marginal fixed cost. Uh, so the marginal fixed cost of labor in a perfectly competitive market is equal to the wage rate. So we're going to see that theory now, the demand for labor for a single farm. So to determine the de demand for labor for a single farm, the theory of marginal productivity is used. This theory states that profit Maximizing farms will hire additional units of a variable factor up to the point at which the marginal revenue product is equal to the marginal factor cost, MFC. To illustrate this, the following assumptions are made. The first assumption is a perfectly competitive market for labor. So that assumption means the wage rate is fixed. So the wage rate is fixed at a particular rate, maybe W or W1, because the market is under perfect competition. Remember, a perfectly competitive market where all farms are price takers, you know? So a perfectly competitive labor market means labor takes the wage rate that is fixed by the market, and that wage rate is fixed at W. Two, labor is the only variable factor. So all the other factors are fixed. Three, technology is given as a constant. We saw a similar uh, assumption under production, chapter five, when we are looking at the short run. So technology was supposed to be the most efficient. So the only thing that varies is labor. Uh, labor inputs. Sorry, technology was supposed to be efficient and productivity is at the most efficient levels. So the only way you can change your output is by varying your inputs and the only input variable there was labor. So technology again here is given as a constant. And for the goal of the farm is to maximize profits. Then we want to explain some concept before we introduce this theory of marginal productivity. 
So first, the concept of marginal products. So marginal product is the change in total output that occurs when one additional unit of a variable factor is added to the fixed factor, and the variable factor here is labor. So the marginal product uh, would be change in the total output as a result of an additional unit of labor. So entrepreneurs in their bid to maximize profits are more concerned with the revenue yielded, uh, with revenue yielded by the labor's efforts than they are with the physical productivity. So entrepreneurs are more interested in the revenue that will come in than in the physical productivity of labor. And as such, their main concern is the difference between the cost of employing labor and the revenue yielded by the sale of the product of labor. So they are more interested in the profit that comes from the sale of the product of labor than they are with the productivity of labor. So productivity refers to output of labor, but entrepreneurs will be more interested in the revenue they obtained out of selling the product of labor. So it would therefore be in order to examine several key concepts. Then there is what we call marginal revenue product uh, of a variable factor refers to change in total revenue resulting from the employment of one more or one less unit of them variable factor. So since entrepreneurs are, are more interested in the revenue yield, then we want to know what is the change in total revenue as a result of one, employing one more unit of labor. And that means the one more unit of labor produces output which is sold there. Then this output sold, what is the change in revenue? So that will be the marginal revenue product. It is calculated as the marginal product of the variable factor multiplied by the marginal revenue. So marginal product multiplied by the marginal revenue of uh, the variable factor will give me marginal revenue product. You give me marginal revenue product. So under conditions of perfect competition, the price of the product does not change. So if the var variable factor is labor, the price of labor is the wage rate. It doesn't change. Yes. The price of the product does not change as the firm varies output. And as such, the marginal revenue product of labor is equally is equal to the marginal product of labor multiplied by the price of that product. In other words, the marginal product is the additional is the addition to output as a result of employing one more unit of labor. If you multiply by the marginal revenue of that product, okay, the marginal product, if you multiply by the price, the price is the wage rate. The price is the wage rate of the variable factor, which should still give me the marginal product and the marginal product. So these and these are the same. marginal revenue. So every additional to marginal revenue is equal to every unit of labor adds its own price, which is the wage rate. When you add every additional unit of labor, it adds its own price. And its own price is the wage rate. Then we have, we have another concept called 
marginal factor cost, MFC. So MFC is the change in the total cost resulting from the employment of one more. Employment of one more or one less unit of the variable factor. So the variable factor here, we are saying, assume it is only labor. So if I employ one more unit of labor, so the, the change in total cost or marginal fixed cost would be the wage rate, which I'm paying the extra unit of labor. So in the case of a purely competitive labor market, the wage rate will be fixed, which implies that each additional worker adds his own wage to the total cost. So marginal fixed cost is equal to W, the wage rate of each worker. Then the average revenue product, this represents the, in monetary terms, the average return per unit of labor employed. So average return per unit of labor employed, it is calculated by multiplying the average uh, product of labor by the price of the product. So average product is times P is ARP. Because price is constant at all levels of output, ARP and MRP curves will behave um, will behave like Average product, if you remember, and marginal product. So marginal product was cutting average product from above. So they'll behave the same way. So those propositions will result in the diagram we have there. So there's a diagram here that proposes to explain how we arrive at the wage rate or how continued units of labor will be employed. So this is revenue and cost. So, the, the average revenue product and marginal revenue product will behave the same way as the same way as so this will be ARP. This will be ARP behaving the same way as public product. If you remember our chapter five production, eh? we had marginal product cutting, the average product from above. So we we'll bring in marginal product there, cutting this one from above. And we call this, this is what we call MRP, the marginal revenue product. Okay. And equilibrium is found. Average revenue product, then you have the region. So this is what we call marginal fixed cost. If the wage rate, marginal fixed cost one. So the equilibrium is where uh, marginal fixed cost is equals to marginal revenue product. So the farm will be at equilibrium at this point. This point, we call this point E. This is where equilibrium is, where MRP is cut by MFC. So at that point, Labor units to be employed. 
So the units of labor to be employed are going to be is this Q. My diagram is not very clear though. So there's there's a higher rate to send me. This is supposed to be MFC in the MFC one, the broken down line. Eh? The broken down line will tell us how many units. So the broken down line, we drop it here. So where MFC is equal to MRP, that is, what gives us the units of labor to employ? So the units of labor to employ at that point. So they'll employ Q1, our units of labor. Uh, earlier, when Earlier on, at this point, we would have employed Q units of labor like that. So the farm will continue employing labor as long as at the at the point where marginal fixed cost, which is the rate you get, is equal to marginal revenue product. And we say marginal revenue product will be the amount added to revenue, to total revenue, as a result of employing one more unit of the variable factor, which is labor. And we said uh, marginal product times price eh, is what will give you marginal revenue product, um, which is still the same as marginal product times marginal revenue. This is still the same as marginal product times marginal revenue. Marginal revenue, marginal revenue. So there are points when the point B, the point B. So at very high rates, such as so above the average revenue product, above anything above the revenue, the average revenue product uh, means the farm will be making losses. Uh, the loss will be represented by. So if the farm employs at the V2 above ARP, above ARP, and see they employ Q2, they'll be making losses at that point. This is a loss. So labor should be employed before average, below average revenue product. This is G. So in the diagram above, we observe that how the ARP, ARP is this curve, and MRP of major revenue product of labor vary as the individual farm combines different numbers of workers given a fixed amount of land and capital. So we consider that it is only labor that is variable. The other inputs of land and capital are fixed. Both the marginal revenue product and the average revenue product rise at first. At first they are rising, but eventually decline because of diminishing returns indeed diminishing returns in chapter five. The MRP curve cuts the ARP at its maximum point for the same reason as the marginal product curve cut average product at its maximum point on its way down. 
at point E. The marginal product cuts the average revenue product at the maximum point. A firm wishing to maximize profit will employ additional units of workers up to the point where MRP of labor is equal to MFC. So the optimal point is where MRP of labor is equal to MFC, marginal fixed cost. So where the two points cross, and the slope of MFC is greater than the slope of MRC at the point of intersection. Well, the, the slope of MFC will be greater because the slope of MFC is zero, it's horizontal, and MRP is negative because it's coming from above. So at the point of intersection, the slope of MFC will be greater than that of MRP at the point of intersection. So if you assume the prevailing wage rate is W, so W is the wage rate, as determined by the market, and it is constant, eh? the entrepreneur will continue employing additional labor up to OQ. So when the wage rate is W on this line, they'll not, they'll employ up to OQ. Why OQ? Because that's where the marginal fixed cost is equal to marginal revenue product. So what is this is what is guiding us. Eh? The marginal revenue product is equal to marginal fixed cost at that point. So they'll employ OQ units of labor. Determined by the point of the intersection of MRP and MFC, which is point E at this point. So the point of intersection of MRP with MFC. As this will add more to revenue than to cost. Above OQ, so if, if you take any units be, beyond OQ, if you go beyond OQ, additional labor will cost more than the marginal revenue. Will cost more than the marginal revenue. Anything beyond OQ will cost more than the marginal revenue product and will as such not be employed. Below OQ, the farm can increase profit by employing additional. So any units of labor below this side uh, means it's not efficient. The farm can still get add more to revenue by employing units of labor, uh, of labor up to OQ when the wage rate is W. So beyond Q, it adds more to cost than to revenue. So it's in a, I mean, the farm will not increase labor beyond OQ. Why? Because it's at Q where marginal revenue product is equal to marginal fixed cost at point E. So at the average wage rate, W, when the farm equates marginal revenue product to MFC, it will increase its revenue on labor employment by the area W, WC. By the area WC. Yes, 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 yes. So it will increase its area by its, its, um, its So we have a point D. Uh, let me see if I can add a point D. This is Q. Yeah. 
We type the minor rhythm product. So that's point C. So at the average radio W when the farm equates MRP to MFC it will increase its revenue on labor employment by the area W CDE. At a higher wage, wage rate W1, the farm will employ fewer workers. At wage rate W1, the farm will employ Q1, so fewer workers. Q1, fewer than the original Q at a higher wage rate. So at a higher wage rate than Q1, the farm will employ fewer workers. Q1, thus the MRP curve will tell us how the major revenue product curve is like the, the demand curve for labor. The major revenue product curve and the major revenue curve product curve is the demand curve because it tells you how much an additional employee would add to the total revenue. You know, how much they'll add to the total revenue. So, where major revenue product meets the major fixed cost curve, then that's where we have the demand for labor. So, that's the MRP curve will tell us how much labor of of funds should be demanded at any wage rate, and thus it is the demand curve. It is the demand curve. So it is the demand curve. Um, for labor or farms, the major revenue product is the demand. Curve. However, farms will not demand any labor if the wage rate is above the average revenue product. Any wage rate above this curve, like W2. Okay, the farm will make losses. Farms will not demand any labor if the wage rate is above A and P curve, as it would imply losses. I.e., at wage rate W2, the farm by equating M, marginal fixed cost to marginal revenue product. Um, yes. So the major fixed cost is the W2. The major revenue product is here. So the number of workers will fall to the lowest to Q2. I will be making the loss represented by the area F by W2 FGH. So that's shaded area. If they employ W2 also a farm will not demand labor if its MRP is negative. So if marginal revenue product comes to the negative side, then there are no units of labor that will be employed. Therefore, the relevant part of the marginal revenue product, which is the demand for labor, is only the side where it is positive. So it starts from here. Yeah, on the horizontal line and ends at point B. That would be the relevant, uh, I think there's, there's, yeah, I think they are calling this point here K. So it's point BK on the line. 
The other part that is below the horizontal line, the negative part, will not be relevant. The marginal revenue productivity theory can be useful as a tool for analyzing the effects of demand for labor, of changes in certain relevant variables. This is illustrated below. So under the marginal productivity theory, we can estimate the units of labor a firm is prepared to hire. And the units of labor a firm is prepared to hire will be where the marginal revenue product is equal to the marginal fixed cost. The marginal fixed cost is the wage rate. The firm is paying. The marginal uh, uh, revenue product of the firm is the addition, is the addition to revenue by employing a single unit of, by employing a single unit of labor. So the marginal revenue productivity theory can be useful as a tool for analyzing the effects of the demand for labor uh, on change of changes in certain relevant variables. This is illustrated in the diagram below. So you can also illustrate so in the diagram, an increase in the wage rates, for example, from W to W1, will result in a reduction in the quantity of labor employed uh, from, uh, say, Q2 to Q1, if you increase the wage rate. If, however, the marginal revenue product curve can be shifted outwards, upwards and outwards from uh, MRP1 to MRP2, then the quantity of, or quantity of labor can remain the same at Q2 without having to reduce. If alternatively, the shift in the marginal revenue product curve takes place with the wage rate remaining constant at W, then you can employ more units of labor. The amount of labor employed will increase to Q3 or the existing workforce will enjoy a higher wage rate. Shifts in the marginal revenue product curve can be brought about by any of the following uh, factors. So what can make the marginal revenue product curve shift outwards? For example, an increase in productivity can be brought about by the abandonment of a previously held restrictive practice or because of the adoption of new technology that makes labor more productive because of an increase in the price of the product. I think we will stop there with the, with the theory of marginal productivity of labor. So in the next class, we'll look at limitations of the marginal productivity theory. So this theory says the demand for labor will be based on the marginal product or what every additional worker adds to the total revenue. So that will be determined by the marginal revenue product curve. And it is where the marginal revenue product curve is equal to the marginal fixed cost. So the marginal fixed cost in a competitive uh, market is, is fixed with W being the wage rate fixed by the market. So where the two cross, then you get the quantity of labor. For example, if the rate, wage rate is W, the quantity will be Q. If you increase the wage rate higher to the V1, the quantity falls to Q1. If you put the wage rate even higher, W2, the quantity of labor falls to Q2. But at a high wage rate such as the V2, the farm is making losses. Why? Because if above the average revenue product uh, and so on. So I think we'll stop there. In the next class, we'll look at the limitations. we we'll look at the limitations of this theory. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be able to discuss the limitations of the marginal revenue, uh, marginal productivity theory in our next class. Asante Nisana, please enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you.